Okay, so uh, so next we're going to talk about the McCabe TD graphical method for analyzing trade tower. Okay. So the McKinney TD graphical method is a graphical method for combining the equilibrium curve with the material balance operating lines, right? And we've seen this we uh, previously for the absorption and the tower. Okay, so this is going to be something we're familiar with. And uh, so it's for a binary fade mixture and a selected column pressure. And from this analysis, we can get the number of equilibrium stages and the reflux ratio that's required to a desired separation of fit components. Okay. Then once we get this num the number of equilibrium stages and the reflux requirement, we can compute the duties on the heat exchanger and condenser based on energy balance. Okay. So before we go ahead with the, uh, the equations, let's look at some of the nomenclatures, like what, how do we define the um, the parameters here? Okay, so here is a schematic of the distillation column. Uh, so we have a feed that contains a light K with a mole fraction of ZF. Okay, so here light K refers to in this binary mixture, light K refers to the more volatile component, and heavy K refers to the less volatile component. Okay, and we're going to use the mole fractions. That we're going to use a mole fraction of the light K to denote the composition of the feed, the distillate, and the bottom, right? Respectively as ZF, XD, and XB. Okay. And uh, so we are feeding this feed at F stage, right? That's kind of the feed stage. Above the feed stage, uh, the from stage one to F. They, including the total condenser, um, they are called the recti rectify section. Okay. Then below the fade stage, from stage F to stage N, including the board reboiler, they are called the stripping section. Right. So we'll talk about later why it's called re re rectify and stripping. So um, typically, um, to analyze a uh, distillation column problem, we need to know these uh, conditions, right? We need to know the total flow rate, uh, feed rate. Uh, we need to know the ZF, that's the mole fraction of the light K in the feed. We need to know the pressure of the column, right? But in this case, we can assume it's uniform throughout the column just to simplify the analysis. We need to know the phase condition of the feed at the column pressure, okay? Is it liquid, vapor, or mixture, right? We also need to know the vapor-liquid equilibrium curve for the binary mixture at the column pressure. And we need to know the type of the condenser, if it's total or partial. Uh, later, we'll discuss the difference between total and partial. And we we'll also need to know the type of reboiler, right? Total or partial, right? This is typically partial. And uh, uh, we need to know the mole fraction of the light K in the distillate and the mole fraction in the bottom. These are basically the se separation outcome. How pure do you want your um, low K to be and uh, a heavy K to be, right? So distillate will be enriched with the light K um, component, whereas the bottom will be enriched with the <coughs> heavy K component. The ratio of the reflux to the minimum reflux. This is like a ratio of the ref reflux ratio to the minimum reflux ratio. And we'll talk about minimum reflux ratio later. So uh, if we know this, then we can basically analyze and obtain the distillate flow rate, the bottom flow rate, the minimum number of equilibrium stages, and the minimum reflux ratio. Um, the reflux ratio and the boy boy up ratio. So here, a boy up ratio is just some is a concept that's analogous, analogous to the reflux ratio. So reflux ratio is the ratio between the reflux and distillate, right? So when you have the vapor overhead vapor enter this total condenser, uh, it will be condensed into liquid, which enters this reflux stream, which will split this stream into two. One 
gets recycled back to this column that's called reflux. And the other is the distillate that exits the process as a product, right? So reflux issue is the flow rate of the reflux over, um, oh, well here, the reflux ratio is, uh, yes, it's, it's ratio reflux over distillate. Uh, similarly, the uh, boil up ratio is here when we have uh, this liquid stream getting into the reboiler. So uh, part of it will be recycled back to the column and part of it will exit as the bottom. So the boil up ratio is basically the uh, flow rate going back to the uh, column versus the flow rate that exits the column, right? Um, v bar over B, number of equilibrium stages and the optical fit stage location, right? So we, we're gonna de decide, we can decide you know, where we can put this fit stage. If it, it should be in the upper part of the uh, column or bottom part of the column or, or in the middle, right? And we can also figure out the stage vapor and liquid compositions, right? Uh, so we're talking about tree towers here and uh, uh, at each tree, between each two tree, uh, every two trees, the vapor and liquid composition will be different, and uh, we should be able to analyze and uh, obtain, uh, you know, those compositions. Okay, so uh, in order to get the sharp separation, uh, we basically require a multiple countercurrent stages, right? So we need, you know, many stages just to make sure that you know the, the liquid and the vapor they can contact uh, with sufficient sufficiently. And we need reflux and boil up, and uh, we need a zeotropic typically. That, that means a normal system, okay? And uh, um, for a distillation column, XB, that's the um, mole fraction in the, 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 the bottom is gonna be lower than the uh, feet and gonna be lower than the distillate, right? That's because the distillate is enriched with a light key component, right? So it's gonna have a large XD and bottom is enriched with a heavy key component. So it's gonna be, have a very small XB and the ZF is gonna be right in the in between. Okay. Now, if we uh, look at the uh, distillation column and if we split the column into two parts, uh, using the fit stage as the, the boundary, right? So all the stages above the fit stage, including the total condenser is called the rectify section, right? The reason it's called a rectify section is that it works similar as an absorber, right? In which basically the feed, if it contains vapor, right? Well, feed, a vapor stream, a gas stream going upward. And meanwhile, the reboiler will also produce a vapor stream going up, upward. And meanwhile, the total condenser will produce a liquid stream and feed back into the column. And that will basically flow downwards, right? So in this case, total con condenser produce a uh, surprise liquid and the feed and reboiler supplies the vapor. So when the liquid flows down, it's going to make contact with the upcoming vapor and strip off the heavy key component from the vapor, right? So in the rectifying section, heavy component will undergo mass transfer from the vapor to the liquid. Okay, so the liquid, uh, the vapor will have less and less light component, right? So you will have a reducing X whereas the um whereas the the liquid stream will have a reducing Y, whereas the liquid stream will have more and more heavy can heavy um will have more and more heavy K component. So you will have a uh, reducing X, right? Sorry, the vapor stream will have an increasing Y, whereas the liquid stream will have a reducing X. Okay. 
whereas the bottom part, right? So the other stages, including the, below the fit stage, include the partial reboiler. They function as like a stripper. So um, you have the feed and uh, the condenser that supply a liquid that, that flows downward, whereas the reboiler produce a vapor that flows upward. So they will make contact at each stage. In this process, the vapor will strip the light key component from the liquid off. Right, so this is just like a strip stripper. Um, we talk about in the absorption and the desorption lecture. Okay. So then, in order to analyze, and then then, then this kind of like this feed, right? Because the feed condition is not necessarily the same as the uh, condition in the column, right? The pressure and temperature could be different. So. The feed itself functions like a single stage flash process, right? And uh, which we analyzed in previous lectures. So the whole distillation column is like three pieces put in together. We have an absorber, we have a stripper, and we have a single stage flash. Then we need to basically um, study, uh, analyze each of them. Then we can put them together and analyze it, right? So the overall, we can write down an overall mole balance for the whole distillation column. So the feed flow rate equals to um, the distillate plus the bottom. And we can also write down a light K mole balance. So the mole flow, molar flow rate of light K F multiplied by ZF equals um, the, the mole molar flow rate of the light K in the distillate and the light, that, that in the bottom, right? So we can combine them to eliminate B and solve for D, right? So we just basically, uh, from this, you can get B equals F minus D, then you can plug B here and just reorganize the terms. You will get D as a function of F and this. So basically from this, you know, if we know the, uh, you know, all these are known, right? Fate is also known, so we can compute the um, distillate rate, flow rate, and the, the bottom flow rate. Okay. So next, next look at the rectify section. So here we're gonna apply more balance again, like we did with our absorber and a stripper. Then we can obtain the uh, operating line for the rectify section. Okay. So here. Um, so we have this rectifying section uh, that's made of uh, that that has uh, many stages from uh, you know labeled as one to small n right and uh, and so we can label the vapor phase uh, the liquid phase and vapor phase composition right, in between um, two trees right using using the similar nomenclature as the absorber okay. So, and if we draw a control volume to encapsulating all the stages and the total condenser, we can write down the overall mole balance of this, right? So in which we have, basically we have vapor goes into this control volume, but we have liquid coming, coming out down, right? Into the bottom section of the um, stripper section of the distillation column. We also, have the distillate leaving the distillation process. So we have V equals L plus D. Uh, we can also write down the light cave mole balance, right? Just by multiplying the corresponding flow rate with the corresponding uh, mole fraction of the light cave. Right? So here, V uh, in the vapor phase, the composition is YN plus one. And here, the liquid composition is XN. Then for the distillate, it, it's XD. Okay. So then we can just combine these two equations, right? By, uh, you know, dividing. Uh, so we don't have to, you know, to basically just dividing V on both sides of this equation. You will have Y and plus one equals, um, it's going to be linearly dependent on XN, right? 
So this relates the light key composition in the passing streams. That's the streams uh, in between each stages, in, in, in between every two stages. If L and V are constant, then this is a straight line. If L and V are constant, then L over V is also a constant. And we have a straight line that relates Y with X, right? So we're, we're gonna talk about um, the conditions for L and V to be constant in, in the next slide. So, and we can also rewrite this equation in terms of the reflux ratio by, can, by basically plugging the definition of the reflux ratio, which is basically the ratio of L over D, right? And as well as a mole balance, right? How do we do that? So L over V, that's the slope of this line, right? V is by the mole balance, V is L plus D, right? So you have this, then you just divide D on both up, you know, above and below the line. Then you have L over D here. That's the definition of reflux ratio. Then, right, so you have them. That's R, then that's one. So you have L over V equals R over R plus one. Then D over V is basically one minus L over V, right? Because D is V minus L, right? So if you plug in that, you will have one minus this give you one over R plus one, right? So then you can just replace this and that with reflux ratio, right? So you have you get a equation that correlates the uh, composition of the passing stream in of, of the you know gas and liquid um, that's only dependent on the, the slope is only dependent on the reflux ratio and the intercept depends on the reflux ratio and the distillate composition. Okay. So here, um, we can have zero L, that means we have, after the stream comes out of the total condenser, we do not recycle any of it back to the tower. Right? In that case, L equals zero, reflux ratio, L over D is, is basically zero. Then the slope is gonna be zero, right? So L over E gonna be zero. So we're gonna, the operating line in this case is gonna be a horizontal line. Right, yeah. theoretically, theoretically speaking. Uh, then theoretically speaking, we can also recycle all of the condensed stream back to the tower. In this case, D is zero, right? Then R is infinity. Then this term, the ratio is gonna be one, right? So infinity divided by infinity, it's gonna give you one. Okay, so your then then your operating line is gonna be a forty five degree line in this case. So so uh, in this derivation, we assume constant L and V, right? In order to have constant L and V, the system must satisfy the so called McKeevy T assumption, uh, which says both components must have equal a constant molar enthalpies of vaporization. That means they have the same latent heats when they vaporize. So then the, the sensi sensible heat is negligible compared to latent heat. That means as your streams going upward and downward, then because temperature is gonna change, if the, if the sensible heat is, uh, is negligible, that means um, when you're, when these two uh, concurrently passing streams moving uh, across each other as the temperature of the tower changes with its height, they do not absorb or release heat, okay? Because as te although temperature changes, um, this sensible heat is just negligible compared to the heat required to vaporize um, or condense uh, your streams. The column, column is insulated. That means there's no heat loss. The column pressure is constant. Right? So that, that will simplify our uh, analysis. So we can use X, Y diagram under one pressure. And we don't have to consider pressure effect. Right. So these are very big assumptions, but they allow us to greatly simplify the analysis. Right? And in this case, once L and V are constant, we have a linear operating line. That's just going to make the graphical method very um, easy. So now let's look at the operating line on an XY diagram. So here, this is equilibrium curve, 
right? So I'm from again from this, um, this is on a y x diagram from this, and we can tell that um. So um. So then then basically then this is a forty five degree line, right? And the blue line is operating line with a slope of r over r plus one, right? Whose slope, uh, is ranges from forty five degree, or a horizontal line, right? This operating line will cross with the y axis at this point. Right? Basically, if you let x equals zero, you get you get that you know, the coordinate of that point. A walk cross the forty five line. Uh, at the composition of the distillate composition, right? Why is that? So uh, basically, we know the operating line uh, represents the gas phase and liquid phase composition passing through each tree. For the first tree here, right, the liquid phase composition is X zero and the vapor phase composition is y one. If we use a total condenser, right? So all the vapor here is condensed to a liquid. So y one, that means they have the same composition, right? So y one is gonna be equal to x zero. And then x zero is equal to x d because these are the L and D are two streams that's being formed by splitting the same stream, right? So that's why this point is gonna be um is going to be um, right because x zero equals y one, so that point sits on the also sits on the forty five degree line. That's why the operating line basically um, cross the forty five degree line on the point with a coordinate coordinate of y one and x zero and x zero equals x d. Okay. So we talk about if r equals zero, then we're gonna have we're gonna have a horizontal line, operating line. If r equals infinity, we're gonna have a forty-five degree operating line. So what is the minimum r that allows separation, right? Even though we know theoretically speaking, r could be zero for you to have a horizontal line, but in order to achieve separation, r needs to be larger than that. So we will answer what what is the minimum r that allows separation later. Now let, next, let's look at a stripping section. So here, similarly, we can draw a control volume to to, uh, to basically circle all the stages that's below the fate stage, right? From uh, m to uh, from m plus one to n, uh, also including the partial reboiler. Okay. Uh, so here we use L bar and V bar to denote the liquid and vapor flow rate because the liquid and vapor flow rate in the stripping section is going to be different from the uh, liquid and vapor flow rate flow rates in the um, rectifying section. The reason being that between them there's a feed section that will feed liquid vapor or both into the column. Right? So similarly, then we can write down the overall mole balance, right? L, that's what's coming in, equals V, that's what goes out plus B. And uh, then we can write down the light key mole balance, right? Just by, by multiplying the flow rate with a mole fraction of the liquid vapor and the bottom. So if we apply McKeeley, McKeeley Tilly assumption, then L and V are constant, right? So then we can just rewrite this equation just by moving this term to the left, divided by V, then you have Y and plus one equals this, right? So this is the operating line for the stripping section. It re relates the light, compos light key composition in the passing streams, right? In the in the liquid and vapor streams, um, uh, at, at each at each stage, assuming equilibrium. So here, we can define we can rewrite this equation in terms of reboil uh, up ratio, right? VB. That's a ratio of V over B. That this is similar to reflux ratio, right? So reflux ratio is a ratio between the stream that's being recycled back to the tower and the stream that's being discharged uh, as a product. So here, similarly, oil up ratio is the ratio of V, that's the stream being recycled back to the tower, and uh, B, that's the stream that's being discharged as the bottom product. So 
Now, with that, we can derive that we can rewrite this equation in terms of VB. So L over V, right? So if you basically uh, replace L with V plus B, then L over V is basically one plus B, uh, V, one over VB, right? So that gives you VB plus one over VB. So this is XB over, this is just um, B over V, that's just one over VB, right? So that gives you this. So then we can draw the operating line for the stripping section on the um, XY diagram, right? So now, now here there's a, uh, so then uh, here there's a partial reboiler. That means, um, so we have a, we, we, we only reboil part of that liquid into vapor. So here we're gonna have, we're gonna produce a, uh, like a vapor phase that's in equilibrium with the liquid phase. So YB is not equal to XB, right? But they, they are in equilibrium with each other. So YB and XB sits on the equilibrium curve, but it doesn't sit on the operating line, okay? So we'll talk more about this later, right? So we're gonna talk, about, later we're gonna talk about how the choice of partial and uh, um, uh, partial and total Reboiler and uh, condenser affect kind of the you know, where the operating line cross the forty five degree line and the equilibrium line. Well, so the the forty five degree line. Okay, so here, um, similar to the rectifying section, so reboiler ratio range from zero to one. Um, so then this slope will also range from one to uh when when vb is the vb is is uh oh it's it's from zero to infinity so when vb is zero then this is infinity when vb is infinity then this is well right so so as, as a result we're gonna have a slope we're gonna have an operating line that's either overlapping with the 45 degree line or it's gonna be um uh, gonna be vertical, right? When VB is zero, then you have a infinity slope, you're gonna vertical. Okay, so uh, we'll stop here, then we will continue uh, to talk about the Q line.